Hey there, family. The, uh, one of the favorite um, stories in the Bible is this moment when the disciples are with Jesus and he's just about to ascend into heaven and they ask him a question. And it's a question a lot of us might be having right now. Here's the question. Hey Lord, when will you restore the kingdom to Israel. <laughs> like, when's the kingdom going to come in its fullness? Because what's going on right now is crazy. Well, he doesn't even answer them, really. He said, you know, it's not really for you to know the exact time when it's fully fulfilled. Because, of course, we know that the kingdom has come, yet it's still coming. We live in the already, not yet. But Jesus said, it's, it's not really the question when. The question or the real issue is this. He says in verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. So catch what's happening. Hey, Jesus, um, when is the kingdom going to come? Yeah, wrong question. But when you receive power, you'll be my witnesses. And what we learn there is that's then the extension of the kingdom. It's fascinating. So what happens then is Jesus ascends into heaven, the Bible says, and goes up, right? And all of the disciples are just watching them, watching him and looking up into the clouds. And I don't know how long that would have been, but long enough for two other dudes to come alongside him, these two dudes dressed in white, which we would assume here are angels of some sort. And they go to the guys and they say, uh, what are you looking at? <laughs> like, what the heck are you doing? And they're like, um, well, you know, Jesus. And they said, hey, Jesus is going to come back in the same way. It's going to be really obvious. So they're encouraging them at the end of that story. This is in Acts 1. Uh, why do you stand looking into heaven? Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And later then they go and they go about the work of kingdom activity. In a way, these guys are saying to them, why are you just looking at stuff? Like, go do. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit and activate the kingdom lifestyle. I know for me that's challenging, is what does that look like every day? What does it look like to have the power of the Holy Spirit? It's kind of like this, you guys, just hours ago, a couple hours ago. I literally went out to turn my car on. <laughs> And it's an older car. I didn't want to have a car payment, so we bought kind of an older car. Anyway, 200,000 miles on it, so you never know what's going to happen. So I go in, and it worked great. Got down to the church, no problem. Turned the key. Nothing. Deader than, not even a kick, 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 kick. Nothing. So it's like, hmm, it certainly seemed like a power issue, right? Try it again, of course, you know. And then I'm like, you know, come on, Lord. And then you hit the thing, and it didn't work. So then I went, popped the hood, and I thought, I don't know much about cars, but... I know that sometimes you gotta wiggle the connection to the battery. <laughs> and so that's all I did. I just, and went back in the car, turned on, no problem. Drove off, got my lunch, a little butter biscuit, it was good. And so the point of that is, like this is a great car, I, I can look at it, I can sit in it, and I can enjoy it, but it doesn't do anything for me and I'm not a help to anybody else if there's no power to it. And so just by connecting power to the vehicle, it operated as it should. And so for some of us as followers of Jesus, I know for me, the question is, are we connected to the power of the Holy Spirit? So that kingdom can operate through us, through all sorts of signs and wonders and gifts that are for everybody, everywhere, at all times. I don't know if you knew that. But the Holy Spirit and all of the gifts, and we'll hear more about this over the next week, are available to everybody, all the time, everywhere. And so may we receive the power of the Holy Spirit with humility and activate our kingdom lifestyle in the Grand Valley and beyond. So here's the three questions for you this week. One, what's been your origin story for the Holy Spirit in your faith? What I mean by that is, like growing up, did you not hear about the Holy Spirit? Did you not have a church kind of background? Maybe you had like I am a mainstream church background, but we didn't really talk or lean into the Holy Spirit or gifts of the Spirit much. And so what's your origin? Share that with people or think about that if you're doing your personal devo devotional time. Second question, how has that origin for you impacted how you see 
operate or lack of operation in the power of the Holy Spirit today. Like, maybe because of that, you weren't aware that the Holy Spirit is God and the Holy Spirit is a person and the Holy Spirit wants to have a relationship and work through you and bless people. Like, how, so question one, what's your origin? Story with the Holy Spirit. Question two, how has that impacted you today? And then, of course, question three is really just a, a, an encouragement to ask the Lord right now where you're at to say, Holy Spirit, fill me again. Overwhelm me. Empower me. And what would he have you do being full of the loving power of the Holy Spirit? What could he be inviting you into? Three questions. Origin, how's that impacted you today? What is the Lord inviting you into when it comes to being empowered by the Holy Spirit? God bless you guys.